All right, so I'm gonna show you how to set up a fuel pressure sensor in DSM Link. Here I've wired it into my MDP sensor, so I just select linear fuel pressure sensor, uh, which is the right setting for a generic Amazon style or Amazon or eBay uh, zero to 100 PSI fuel pressure sensor, uh, which I'll provide a link to. Okay, so once that's set, you need to save pin assignments. All right, so there's gonna be a button here, it's grayed out. You're gonna click that when it's, when it's uh, available to you. And then from there, you need to add captured values. Okay, and you're gonna go find that linear fuel pressure sensor. And then you're gonna click the button over here, it says add. Because this is bold, it's already been added. Now you need to add displayed values, where you go in and you find the same thing. Uh, it should already be in here. Yeah, see it's already in here at the bottom, but normally it'd be over here. All right, so you would find it, you would click it over, and then you click OK. Now the next thing you actually need to do is configure it. So you right click the object, and then where it says linear fuel pressure preferences, click that. Now up here, these values are gonna be way off to start with because it's gonna be set up for 130 PSI uh, sensor. So the sensor I bought uses a 0.5 voltage at zero PSI. So you put 0.5, zero, and then at 4.5, it's at 100 PSI. Um, by default, this is gonna be zero, this is gonna be five, and it's gonna read uh, zero to 135 or 136, something like that. Once all that's done, you hit apply, and then you should be able to log it. So now if I do a start stream, if I come over here, and we're gonna go to MISC, and we're gonna turn my fuel pump on, and I come back down here, I'm reading 44.85 PSI, all right? Now, I'm going to go ahead and leave that running. I'm going to go over here and check my mechanical gauge. You're going to see it's close, but it's a little off. Right, so getting into the mechanical gauge, I'm actually closer to 42 on the dot. So I'm about 2 PSI off. That I can live with. And I've got no leaks here. It's good to check for that now. Basically, ooh, do I have a leak there? I may have one. No, it's just cold metal. Okay. All right, so basically, this is the sensor you buy on Amazon, and it comes with a pigtail. And then I just went to the hardware store and bought a 1-8th uh, MPT T and teed it into my existing FPR. You can also buy ones that uh, come off of your fuel hose line for a little bit of a cleaner install, and I may do that later. Uh, you can buy six orb ones to put them on the opposite end. Uh, once I get it all figured out, I, I can kind of do that. I just wanted to get something that would work. You go ahead and turn this back off because I don't need that on. And I'll show you how the wiring works. Now I used an MDP sensor input, all right? So your MDP sensor looks like this. Normal it would be on your intake manifold. I have an Evo 3 intake manifold, so I don't have a uh, mount for it anyway. This has been cut off for a long time. Your black wire there, that's your ground wire. Uh, and I've used this red zip tie to denote that the green and yellow here, that is your five volt power. And this blue zip tie over here denotes that the green and black is actually your data input or, uh, yeah, your, your data input wire. Now, what I did is I just cut that and then I put bullet connectors, these guys. Right, so I used bullet connectors on the MDP sensor and on the new harness. The new harness is wires. I think it's black, red, and blue. Uh, black, red, and blue, so black is ground, red is power, blue is uh, data. And then I just made a little jumper connection because the NDP wire really only came to about here and the new wire only came to about here. So I made a little one foot extension harness and then I used bullet connectors. And the reason I used bullet connectors instead of uh, soldering them is because you can actually use that same zero to 100 uh, PSI sensor for oil pressure uh, or really any, any kind of liquid pressure you want to measure and you're limited on inputs with ECM link. So this is gonna let me swap that sensor out with, uh, with the same sensor in another location just by swapping the patch harnesses. Uh, and so you can see a little bit of the patch harness here. Uh, I've actually got it going down here. Your harness is gonna look different because you're gonna have a plastic loom and I've replaced mine with tech loom. Yeah. That's gonna be hard to peel back. But basically, yeah, you're gonna see those bullet connectors back there and I, I just put a little bigger section of tech loom back there to help clean it up a little bit. All right, guys, that's really all you gotta do. It's, it's a pretty straightforward install. I did it in about an hour, hour and a half, mostly just dicking around with bullet connectors. Uh, you could probably actually solder it together in an hour.
Good luck.